Hi, I'm Luann Midgley with Tell Your Story Videos, and this is Shop Talk. Today, I'm talking to Kathleen Tennant, who is a mixed media artist from Coquitlam, BC. I've been watching Kathleen's business over the years, and it has changed a lot. And I wanted to have her on today to talk about her art and to look behind the scenes in her evolving business. Welcome, Kathleen. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. How did becoming an artist with worldwide exposure begin for you, Kathleen? I mean, were, were you always an artist? No. No, no. I was actually the polar opposite of an artist. I never, ever took art in school, ever. In fact, it terrified me. So I fell into it. It really started when there was... This is really goes back to 2008, I guess it was. And Stampin' Up was a big craze of everybody's making cards. And my neighbor actually sort of got me into that. And I thought, okay, I'll make my Christmas cards this year. Because a couple friends of mine, when we were in our early 20s, we would make each other gifts, right? And me doing these cards there was something in that process that just drew something out of me and it was at a t sort of a tumultuous time in life there was a lot of things going on so it allowed me actually to go in and while i was creating it was a feeling and that's all i went on was a feeling and I enjoyed that feeling, that process of creating, and how it made me feel. And so that is what started it. And it just grew. I just kept evolving and learning more and trying new things and just growing, I guess, because that's what you do when you you know, you start with one thing and then, well, that gets a little bit boring. So let's add on to this. And then that grows again. And you just find yourself in a completely different spot than where you started. Right. So it started out really small and just with nothing business wise ever in my mind, ever. It was just a hobby. That's really, really interesting that it's, it's just been an organic thing for you. And, and so you must have started buying materials and supplies yeah. and maybe, maybe wondering what's going on here? What am I doing? Is it just for art's those, sake? I think those around me thought I was losing my mind because eBay packages, you know, you'd buy things off eBay and they'd start arriving and more supplies and, oh, let's try this. And then um, I went from cards. I had this whole box full of cards and half of them I never sent. Like, I, I think I ended up throwing them away or they're in storage somewhere, but I never sent them. I just kept making them. But it was the process of the making not the intention of like giving them away. It was the process that I enjoyed. And so that is what just kept growing. And so, yeah, I accumulated a lot of supplies <laughs> and the pile kept growing bigger because it was just like, I couldn't get enough. And it, but it was feeding me. And it's a really hard thing to describe because in a lot of ways for what was going on personally it was healing at the same time so it was i often say art is a form of therapy and that is truly what it was for me and it just kept growing so take me back to the, the, the beginning then of it becoming a business. I mean, it, it's grown so much over, over the years. And, uh, but at the beginning, what were you, how were you selling these, your cards? Because it started out with cards uh, to, to, your, to, to people. How did, you get, how did you get it out there? And then, and then we'll talk about where you are now. When I very, very first started, 
it was these books, these little journals that I was making. And that's what I first started selling. And it was from there that the cards came because I, I recognized, okay, people are buying these books. And when I first opened an Etsy shop, um, it was selling these journals and it was like a six by six size and an eight by eight. And they had lined paper or they had sketch paper and, but they all had original art on the front. And what I found was it didn't take long for them to start selling. I think the very first one that sold went to Japan, which was like, Oh, that's weird. <laughs> How much is shipping to Japan? <laughs> So it was a huge learning curve. And I had a couple of friends who just encouraged me along the way to say, you should really sell those, right? So it just takes somebody sort of prodding you a little bit to, you should sell those. Cause you're looking at it going, really? Really? Like you think somebody's gonna buy it, really? And then from there, I recognized that okay, people are buying these, but they're not using them. They're displaying them. So, and it wasn't necessarily cost effective either because it's original art on the cover of these books. So I was selling them for like $25, but it's an eight by eight original, which I could sell for 60 to 80 dollars right so you started as as i went through the process it was like okay this is getting a bit much they're super time consuming i'm never gonna get out of it monetary what they're worth and then people aren't even using them so i decided to take the same process that i was using and take the art and sell the originals on canvas, but then reproduce as greeting cards and other stationary products. That's, that's great. I, I wondered about your process and, and how your products have evolved. And that, that's interesting to hear it from that perspective. Yeah. To see that it, it was a, it was a, a user experience that made you understand your art and how it was being, it was being used and displayed. And then it's like, Oh, <laughs> I, I see something else. I see another opportunity here. Yeah. And it was, it was an interesting process. Cause I did have a couple people that were saying, uh, you could do so much more with this. And so it was, you know, you just had to learn how, um, and I've had somebody along the way always sort of, stroking my ego and helping me out and um and it really was that it was professional what i would deem professional artists those with um an educational background who i you know you look up to and their advice to you sort of when you don't have that experience tends to mean a little bit more because they s must know what they're talking about right and um, they have an eye for these things because that's what they've been doing their whole entire life. Whereas I just create what I like. I create what I want to create. And I don't necessarily have an end game when I'm creating it. I, am, I create off of feeling. I, I now have more of an end game when I create, but when I very first started, I didn't. It was just, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see what happens when I toss this together and this together and see where it ends up, right? So. Well, and it's, and it's quite the process too, just looking at uh, one of your videos on your, on your website. And I, 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 I love that because it's, it's going through your process really on high speed. And it's, it's interesting what you do and how, how you uh, start and the, the, whole, the whole journey of your art yeah. um, from beginning to end. And it just, you know, it's amazing to me um, how you're, what you're thinking. And so I wanted to kind of understand how you're thinking 
thinking when you when you <laughs> when you go and decide. So what do you do when you decide you're going to make a piece of art? Do you have so you don't do you have someone in mind now when you're making the, it for them? Well, it depends. So I I I do purposely create some things for a marketplace and then other things I strictly create for myself. So there is a couple different ways to look at it. Like if you're creating for a notebook, for instance, you have to have a certain, you have to be able to picture that design on a notebook and it has to make sense in my brain. Um, but if I'm simply creating for me, um, I often have an idea and it ends up nowhere near it at the end <laughs> because you get stuck again you get stuck in a process and it typically oh you see different things as you're creating and so what you started with doesn't necessarily look anything like the end product and sometimes it's like a hard right like it just it's like Oh, well, that worked out, but that's nothing like what I want to create today. Like that's not where I was going with that because it sometimes that starting place is an emotional starting place. So you're thinking, okay, well that would work. But as you're going through, it's, it's just feeling, you know, the process takes over and it ends up usually better than what I envisioned in the first place. And it's like, okay, this is what I was meant to create. Absolutely. Now, That's you nice. also give a lot of space uh, to words. So your art isn't just um, um, floral. And, and it's a lot of floral. I want to talk to you about that and how that inspires you. But um, you, you do give space to words. And, and that's uh, beautiful inspirational lines. So where does that come in? And, and I mean, it's, I, I love how they make you feel. And I, and I have my own piece and the, the inspirational line being be grateful for how much you've grown and I have it right here look see <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I I absolutely love this little piece because it just sits here right lovely on my desk and so I I look at that every day Kathleen and what it means to me is um and how it makes me feel so I'm letting you know um that I look at that because some days are hard, right? In business and trying to figure things out and you just feel like you're going to pull your hair out or you feel like, I don't know how to do this. Will I ever figure it out? And every day I'm learning something new in my field. Uh, and so I just take a look at that. I read the words and I say, yes, it just grounds me and just pulls me back together again. And so that's how powerful your art is. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the the words, you know, I've um, always been somebody who, to me, words matter. They're, they're very important. Choose your words very carefully um, because they will have a lasting effect on somebody, whether they're good words or they're not so great words. And it's typically the not so great words that we remember and they stick with us and you tend to like ruminate on them. Like go like things that negative things that people say tend to stick. So choosing our words very carefully is something I've always tried to do. It's, it's little things like what would I like, especially like now with COVID everybody is stressed <laughs> right everybody is super stressed so you can feel that collective anxiety in the air you can feel it when you go to the grocery store you can you can hear it in people's voices so when i'm creating i feel that of other people and i just want to make them feel better or remind them that you know you're fine just the way you are right like there's no reason to try and be something that you're not in a lot of my um sympathy cards for instance um i sell a lot of sympathy cards and sadly i have sold the most amount of sympathy cards in 2020 than i ever have which is heartbreaking 
Um, but it was, I, I, yeah, it, a lot. And I just think because the words that I choose, they're not fluffy. <laughs> like when you go into a store and you go through the card selection, it's like, ugh, these are just too fluffy. Like they're just too much. But, and mine are a little bit more straight to the point, right? Like sending you love and healing vibes or it's okay to cry, right? Your art has, has evolved into different things over the years. And I'm just wondering about your distribution channels because that has grown and evolved as well and has kind of then changed how your art can be experienced by, the, by whoever buys it. I mean, they can actually engage and, and use your art now. I mean, through, through two different sites that you're working with. Yeah, so, um, which is great, because I, I love how um, art can be transformed. Well, basically, what I learned years ago is that everything you see out in the retail world with a design on it came from an artist. So whether you're a digital artist or you make it with your own hands, it all came from somewhere. Some artists created anything that you see with art on it, and they're licensed, which I also do, um, and they get paid. So, you know, shop local is, is great. <laughs> but also, when you do shop in other stores, when you purchase something, an artist is getting paid. So not a lot of people recognize that there is an actual artist behind a lot of what you see, well, everything really in the retail market, from t-shirts to pillows to candlestick holders to, to mugs, right? Like somebody created the art on that product and when you buy it, they get money in their pockets. So it's, I, I loved watching my art get transformed onto products i thought it was it's exhilarating it's really fun um society six is one of the sites that you can do that and it's just basic anybody can do it actually it's it's just an avenue for any artist whether you're a digital artist or watercolor artist or whatever you can you can do it and it's just a way that you can get your art out there and see it on different products like it, it, and it's fun. It's a fun way. And you know, somebody has got your art on napkins or I have a friend who's got a serving tray <laughs> with, I'm like, go over there. And she's got, you know, the tea set out. And I'm like, Oh, that's my art on there. Right. <laughs> and I've had a couple people, um, who I don't know. I've seen pictures and like, is this your art? It's like, yeah, that's, that's my art. So it's it's fun and it's it's a, just a way for artists now because so many people are creating and with the internet you can get your art out there it doesn't have to be in a gallery it doesn't have to be in a little shop um you can put it wherever you want we we have the technology now and it's 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 the neat feeling when you're sitting in your pajamas and you're having your coffee and all of a sudden, you know, you look and you, oh, I just sold a, you know, a mug or I sold a sticker and you weren't even doing anything. You're just sitting there. So it is done on a, like a royalty type basis for that type. So if you paid 20 bucks, I may get a dollar of it, right? Like, so it's the more in that platform, the more you sell, the more you make right? And different products have different price points. So the royalty, depending on if you sell art prints, is higher or wall, wall decor is higher than if you sold a sticker, right? Or an iPhone case. So you get like a buck 30 or something for your iPhone case. But if you sold an art print, you get 20 bucks. If you sold a canvas, you get even more, right? Okay. So it's just a, and you don't have to have the product in your home. 
No, it's a it's a game changer and it's a it's a beautiful thing for for artists like yourself and and be able to not worry so much about all of that part of the yeah. the, the business really and yeah. uh, and the distribution then can go worldwide and and how far has your art gone? You mentioned Japan and that was your first one. Um, <laughs> it's gone most. It's gone a long way. <laughs> most it's seen most places. Let's put it that way. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think I've sold anything to like the Eastern European countries. Um, but yeah, it's been Australia, New Zealand, Japan, um, nothing to China, um, all over the United States, mm -hmm. all over Canada, um, Paris. Um, I sent one to a, a print once to a parish in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of fun. Scotland, um, Ireland. Yeah, it's gone everywhere. Everywhere. So, Hawaii. What's it, what's it like knowing that your art is all over the world? Um, it's a little bit s surreal, but it, at the same time, it's, it's a nice feeling. And usually I get really good feedback from people saying, you know, how much it touched them. And there's a few designs that I have that are repeat the same seller will buy it the same design and they send it to people like i have one design it's called i am strong and it's all words right and this one buyer she sells it or sends it to um cancer patients hmm. yeah wow. so good. anybody she knows that is in treatment and i i know this because in with it comes a note or sometimes she asks me to send it directly to them with a note so yeah it's it's nice when that happens or you know you get the story behind sometimes after you know somebody who re received it will then say i received this from somebody and now i want to send it to someone else going through the same thing because i know how much it helped me mm. so that's always a good feeling you, you gotta take a pause when that happens. Yeah, for sure. Um, absolutely. That's, uh, yeah. that's nice. It's nice to get some feedback and understand, um, how, how it's, uh, how it's making people feel. Yeah. And, and that connection, right. And, 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 and how do you, so you, you use social media quite a bit and, I do. and you engage with your community there and, um, promoting your artwork. Um, and it's mostly on like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Yeah, I don't. Pinterest is a funny one. Mm. <laughs> I, I personally like looking at haircuts on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my favorite pastime. Uh -huh. I have quite the cute pixie cut board. Um, but I get most of my customer interaction, I would say Instagram, really. Instagram and Facebook. But it's interesting because certain platforms, you know, they're buyers and certain ones, you know, they're never going to buy. <laughs> interesting. And it's, I won't say which ones, but you just know, you know, that if you po post something on one platform, it's never going to amount to much, but it's just engagement. Whereas on other platforms, you have a larger potential for someone to actually buy. Mm. So... So it's pretty, do you feel it's pretty important to keep showing up on, on those platforms on a regular basis? Is that? Yeah, you have to, you have to. And the thing with art that, you know, some people, I guess maybe with different, like real estate probably wouldn't do the same thing, but people who I find engaged with artists, they want to know the artist. They want to see you in your daily life. I get more traction from personal posts than I do art posts. Like you see all the people who lie dormant. They don't necessarily like your posts every single time, but they're watching. And then when you make a personal post, they come out of the woodwork, right? So it is important to um, connect. And the more you connect, the more you build a relationship with your potential buyers, um, but people have a vested interest, I find, in what you're creating and not necessarily the process. 
Um, but they do want to know the stories and they do want to know about you personally versus your real estate agent that you want to see what they're selling. Right. So it's, there is a difference. I find you do have to connect differently um, when you're an artist and maybe post a little bit more than the average Joe um, and engage more as well. Right. Right. Well, and you do it so well. So it's obviously something that is, is, does it come naturally to you to do that or? No, Mm. no video especially does not come naturally. So (laughs) everybody's doing those Instagram lives and the Instagram videos. No, I, mm -mm. no video is not my forte. I'm not, I keep getting coaxed. You should do it more. You should do it more. I'm like, I know, I know, but no, it's, that to me just feels, I don't know, that's out of my element. I just feel so foreign doing that. Almost like you're, I don't know. I can't, it's almost, um, I feel too much ego when I do that. And um, I, I don't like that feeling. I'm very much a bes- behind the scenes. I- I'd like to watch you admiring my art, but I may never say that I made it. You know, I do have to improve on that because mm-hmm. apparently that's what the people out there want. <laughs> well, and it seems like that's what all the social media platforms are really pushing right now is, yeah. the, is video. And, yeah. and I know a lot of people are very uncomfortable with it. And in doing what I do with Tell Your Story videos, <laughs> hopefully yeah. I, can, I can make you more comfortable with it, Kathleen, and we can you're, do more. You're very good. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does take some getting used to for sure. And I think it all depends on... Um, you know, just preparing for what you're doing. And, and, and that's the hard part too, is like having to do uh, take after take after take. Lighting is perfect and their hair is perfect. And I'm all about not being perfect. So (laughs) I'm like, "Eh, yeah, take me or leave me. Like, but, but I think that's the refreshing part of, of you and, and what you do. And that's what people want from you anyway. So they don't even want the whole perfect thing. And, and I think the whole perfect thing is going to lose its shine um, coming up. I, because so many people are going to be doing video, they're going to look for something to actually get through the clutter of it all. And, and the more personal and uh, yeah, less perfect is because we're all imperfect. There's no. Oh, uh, yeah. Very much so. (laughs) Very much so. (laughs) Well, thank you, Kathleen, for taking some time out of your day today and uh, taking me through your your art, your process, uh, some in-behind-the-scenes look uh, as to your business and what you do and how you're evolving. And uh, I wish you well and going into a new year and uh, all the best to you. And hopefully we'll have a vaccine and we can all gather. Oh. Won't that be lovely? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Luann. This was fun, actually. This was good. Awesome. All right. You take care.